Happy Pride! Look <laughs> at <laughs>Happy Pride! My name is Paul Richmond. I'm an artist here in Monterey, California. Today I want to share with you a little bit about my own journey as a queer artist, but also introduce you to a bunch of other LGBTQ visual artists who I consider to be huge inspirations. So much has changed this year, but one thing that remains the same is the importance of community. And so I really want to say thank you to everybody involved with putting together this Connected in Pride event and for recognizing the important role that the arts play in our community's history and future. I'm going to start by sharing a short video that introduces myself. I made this a few months ago. Um, I apologize for recycling an old video, but you know, the story's the same. The only thing that's a little different now is the hair color. So here's just a little bit about who I am and what I do. Hi everyone, Paul Richmond here. Welcome to my studio. My earliest memories are waking up really early before my parents and going down and sitting at the dining room table and just drawing. I would do hundreds of drawings every day. They weren't great, <laughs> but I loved it. I've just always known that I am supposed to be an artist. Luckily, my parents were really supportive. They found an artist named Linda who started teaching me oil painting lessons when I was four years old. Being an artist gave me something to take pride in, and that was really important as I got a little older and started to realize that in other ways I didn't fit in with my peers. I actually started to be very ashamed of who I was in, in a lot of ways. All the other boys in my class wanted to be Michael Jordan and I wanted to be Dolly Parton. <laughs> I came from a really conservative background. I went to Catholic school, lived in a small town in Ohio. Being gay was not an option. I actually didn't even really know what that meant. Painting gave me a way to express myself and I needed that. I still do. Today I'm a proud member of the LGBTQ community and I'm a full-time artist. I paint because it's the language that I learned at a really young age to explore and express and deal with everything that was happening in my life. I do a lot of work to try and encourage other people to get in touch with their creative side, especially young people who have experienced bullying themselves. I think being an artist is the most awesome thing in the world. It's like having a superpower and I am so excited and grateful that I get to wake up every day and do this. I love connecting with all of you out there, sharing little peeks at what I'm working on, having conversations with you, trying to answer your questions. A lot of people in the art world try to put you in a box. They say you're supposed to only do one thing, paint the same painting over and over and over again for 40 years, but that would make me crazy. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Some days I feel like being a serious artist. Some days I feel like being silly or painting pinup boys or doing whatever pops into my head. So that's what I'm going to do. If you follow me, you're in for a little bit of a crazy ride. I've been really fortunate to have some amazing opportunities so far in my career. I don't take them for granted, and I don't pretend that they just fell on my lap because I'm so amazingly talented. Everything that I've accomplished has been because of a lot of hard work and determination and confidence. And I want to share that with all of you. People think that to be an artist, you have to be born with this innate, magical ability. But the drawings that I made when I was three years old looked like every other three-year-old's drawings. I just freaking loved doing it. And every day when I go to my easel or I'm designing something on my computer, I still feel like that little kid. So excited about all the possibilities, sometimes overwhelmed when it doesn't work out the way I'm expecting, but always so eager to create something new that wasn't there before and figure out how to make it work. I'm Paul Richmond. Thanks for checking out my channel. I hope you'll subscribe because I am just getting started. And that's me in a nutshell. For me, one of the most important things that I can do as an artist and as a queer person is to be myself, to be as true to who I am as possible. And hopefully by doing so, I can help to create space for other people to do the same thing. And now I wanna introduce you to some other queer artists who are radically and wonderfully themselves. They are all huge inspirations to me and I hope they inspire you too. First up is C. Sevilla. Hey there, my name is C. Sevilla and I am a queer multimedia artist and this is a little montage of some of my work.
please feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Art de Sevilla or uh, check me out on my website at artdesevilla.com. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, happy Virtual Pride, fam. Stay safe, wear a mask, be responsible. Isn't she awesome? This is one of her pieces that I bought at last year's West End Festival. So you see, I really am a big fan. Next up is a young artist who does a little bit of everything. And I love that because so many times people try to put us in a box and say you can only do this or that. But Stephanie Felix is here to show us that you can do anything you want. Hello guys, my name is Stephanie Felix. I am a non-binary lesbian and I was born and raised in Monterey County. As an artist, I work as a freelance illustrator, writer, graphic designer, and seamstress. I've worked for the company The Western Stage constructing puppets and designing projections for productions such as The Princess Who Lost Her Hair. When I'm not at my day jobs, I work on projects that I'm passionate about. Because I'm a part of the Latinx and LGBT community, it's very important for me to reflect that in my art. I design pieces based on my heritage from Mexico, and I post videos about it on Instagram, and I plan on using proceeds to assist those who are affected by ICE. I also like to work on writing and drawing a comic science fiction that is catered towards the LGBT arts since as a very confused teenager I really wanted to give something back to the community that I didn't get growing up. If you'd like to keep up with my work you can follow me on my Instagram stone nectarine where I post pretty frequently and you can also check out my portfolio website sfelixartwork.wixsite.com if you'd like to to see more of my polished work. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That was awesome. And now I want to introduce you to an amazingly talented young artist named Wes Hack, who's originally from Monterey, even though now he lives in Oakland, I still think of him as a Monterey artist. So here's Wes. Hello, my name is Wes Hack. I'm an artist in Oakland, California, although I did get my start in Monterey. Now, like many artists, I'm an artist who loves to dabble in different mediums, but I do focus on a few. I'm a printmaker, which means I do screen printing and my favorite, which is woodblock printing. I'm also a painter. I've been painting this mural right now, which has been an absolute blast. And I'm a taxidermist. In fact, if you are local to Monterey, you can see some of my taxidermy at the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History. Now, no matter what medium I'm using, I'm always trying to create art that says something. To me, that's the point of art, is to make art that says what needs to be said. And that's the point of, the, of an artist, is to figure out exactly what needs to be said. So, what needs to be said? It's pretty clear. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Black femme lives matter. Black disabled lives matter. Black poor lives matter. matter. Black lives matter. And I try to say this in my artwork, whether that's explicitly um, through a piece like my recent Tony McDade piece or whether that's through more of an intersectional lens. Now, if you don't know what intersectional or inter intersectionality means, uh, this is a term that was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw. And basically what it says is that all of these different battles that we're waging against racism, homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, they're all the same battle. And that's because until the most vulnerable in our population are free, think black trans women, nobody is. So sometimes I'm not talking directly about black lives, but I am talking about some of these intersectional topics, specifically um, the ones that relate directly to me. Um, like, I, I am a transgender person, I am a neurodivergent person, I am someone who was raised female, and I have experienced gender-based violence and abuse. So 
I try to talk about those things in my artwork uh, through imagery of trans bodies, of genitalia, uh, through writing about mental health, um, all to sort of demystify these things, to say trans bodies are beautiful, genitalia is not something to be scared of, and mental health is something that we should be talking about. Um, so that's what I try to do in my art, and let me show you an example of how uh, it can look when it all comes together. Now this is something that I just finished, you guys are going to be the first to see it, so I'm really excited to show you. Uh, this is a woodblock, um, woodblock carving, like what I was talking about before in printmaking, and this one is of my friend Q. Uh, now it was a huge honor to work with him. Uh, this piece is going to be part of a larger project uh, called Love Letters to Trans Bodies. And what this project involves is a figure drawing session with a trans person like Q here, uh, turning that image into a wood block. And then uh, we also do an interview together. And that interview is an opportunity to talk about what it's like to be trans and what it's like to hold the intersectionality of so many different identities, trans identities, um, sexuality, maybe it's sex work, maybe it's race, like all of these different things coming together is what we talk about in our interviews. And then those interviews get um, embroidered onto a larger piece. Um, so with Q, we talked about some really great stuff. Um, and I highly recommend you um, check out my Instagram. That's where I'm going to be sharing some of this um, interview content. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram at WACKART. That's W-H-A-A-C-K art. Uh, so two A's in there. And you can also check me out on Patreon. Uh, Patreon's the best way to like stay up to date with everything I'm doing. And you also get artwork sent to your doorstep every day. Um, so, or every day, haha, every month. Uh, <laughs> so check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash hack, H-A-A-C-K. Um, I really appreciate it if you do. Um, so Thanks for watching, y'all. I love that. My favorite artists are always the ones who put themselves into their work and really tell you and show you who they are through what they create. So thank you so much, Wes. Okay, and our last local artist that I'm going to introduce you to, I'm also a huge fan of. <laughs> this is just really fun for me because I'm a big fan of all of these people. Her name is Diana O'Brien, and she is with White Stag Illustration. <music>
so much to all the artists who made videos for us today. You are all so amazing and inspiring. And I hope everybody watching will go and follow all of them on social media, share their work, buy their work, <laughs> do everything you can to support these amazing local talented artists. I came out of the closet shortly after I graduated from college and that was before social media. I'm old. <laughs> and I remember it being really difficult for me to find any other queer artists to be inspired by. We certainly didn't learn about them in school. Mainstream art galleries weren't carrying their work. So I felt very isolated. As time went by and I did start to discover queer artists, contemporary and also from the past, it really helped me to feel more connected to something bigger, something more important. It was validating in a lot of ways. And I continue to be so inspired by queer artists from all around the world who are brave enough to put themselves into their work and share their stories. I wanna share a few with you now who are particularly inspiring to me and I hope that they inspire you too. Micheline Thomas. I am constantly inspired and awestruck by the work of artist Micheline Thomas. She has a seemingly fearless creative spirit that uses whatever medium is necessary to convey her ideas. Much of her work deals with concepts of identity and gender and how society shapes our views on those subjects. I particularly love the way she sometimes divides figures and incorporates different styles that move away from literal representation towards something much more evocative. As more people begin to question long-held beliefs about gender and sexuality, her work is more relevant than ever. Andy Simmons. Artists all throughout history have been influencers, changing the cultural landscape by pushing boundaries with their work. In that sense, I can't think of anyone who harnesses the powers of social media, graphic design, and illustration to influence positive change for the queer community more skillfully than Andy Simmons. Growing up Mormon, he had a lot to overcome in order to accept himself and find his creative voice. But the strength he developed as a result of that process serves his work and all of us well. Aside from admiring the sheer minimal brilliance of his art, I appreciate the way he uses social media to share insights into his own life experiences. I respect the way he honors the queer generations that came before him while simultaneously keeping an eye on the future and challenging us all to be more inclusive and open. I'm so proud of all of his success and genuinely inspired by the way this young influencer uses his platform to make the world better. He's certainly been a big influence on me. Drew Riley. Drew Riley is a transgender artist whose work advocates for gender diverse people in the most incredible way. I discovered her paintings and her powerful Gender Portraits project several years ago when I read an article about it and I have been a fan ever since. She displays written stories of her subject's lives and struggles alongside the paintings when they are exhibited to inspire empathy and validation for people who don't always get to share their voices. With so many divisive forces at work in our society right now, I think art like this that celebrates our differences while reminding us of our common humanity is absolutely vital. Kim Lutweiler. I am a super fan of Sydney-based artist Kim Lutweiler. Everything about her work speaks to me. Her choice of LGBTQ plus and queer allied models, her brilliantly expressive brush strokes and color choices, and her desire to destabilize gender barriers. The figurative elements in her paintings draw me in, while the abstraction suggests there's more than what meets the eye. It's almost an invitation to look closer and fill in the gaps by getting to know her subjects better. I'm so grateful for the work she's doing and proud of the success she is achieving while never faltering from her vision. She's also committed to nonprofit work and using her art to make positive change in the world.
Lisa McClement. There is a quiet strength and power in the portrait paintings of Lisa McClement. Each figure's form emerges softly from a wooden surface, their contours merging with the lines of the wood grain. I became a fan of Lisa and her work when I lived in Columbus, Ohio. She is very involved in the community, both as an artist and activist. Her thoughtful approach to both has been a big inspiration. Andrew Salgado. Andrew Salgado is an artist who has been a big influence on me. I connect with the way he dissects his images and rebuilds them in his own unique way. His work took an expressive turn after he was the victim of homophobic violence in 2008. He was attacked by eight men at a music festival. Taking that horrific experience and using it as inspiration for his art was a brave and brilliant move, and he hasn't looked back since. I am continually amazed at his willingness to grow and push his work in new directions. No matter what he creates, though, there's a distinctive Andrew Salgado quality that is unmistakable. Zanel Muhali. I first learned about artist Zanel Muhali a few years ago when I came across an article about her work. It made a real impact on me. She's a photographer and visual activist from South Africa who uses her art to assert the presence of marginalized queer people in her community. The striking images demand to be acknowledged, and Zanel's commitment to using her work to draw attention to issues of race, gender, and sexuality makes her a role model for all of us who aspire to be visual activists, too. Lotta Lasserstein I often feel an instant connection when I see artwork by other queer artists, and that is certainly true when I first viewed the paintings of Lotta Lasserstein. They are incredibly sensitive and compelling portraits of androgynous women that I find so hauntingly beautiful. They're even more mind-blowing when you learn that they were painted by a Jewish lesbian in the early 1900s. She was one of the first female students to attend the Berlin Academy and blazed a trail for many other artists artists who came after her. Sadly, she was forced to abandon her studio when she was labeled three-quarters Jewish by Nazi racial laws. Kehinde Wiley Kehinde Wiley became famous for painting minority figures in poses inspired by classical Renaissance paintings. I first saw his work in person when he had a show at the Columbus Museum of Art and I was blown away. There is something so old and so new about them all at once. He gained a lot of notoriety recently for painting the official portrait of President Obama, which was breathtaking. Here I'm sharing works from his recent series portraying Tahiti's Mahu community, a group of Polynesians classified as a third gender between male and female. The models themselves chose their own poses, costumes, colors, and background patterns. Art reflects back who we are, and who we can be. And for the empathy evident in his paintings, I think Kehinde Wiley is a modern day master. There are so many amazing queer artists who inspire me. This video could be hours and hours long, but I'm gonna stop myself now because I know you have probably some other things to do today too. I also know that there are a lot more LGBTQ artists here locally who maybe didn't feel like making a video to share with us today, but I would love to invite all of you to use the hashtag the art of pride to share your work with us. We can go online and see what you have too, just in a post on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you happen to be. If you're a queer artist, it does not matter what stage of your career you are at. Even if you are just starting out, what you have to say is important. What you share with the world through your art can be an inspiration to so many other people. I hope everybody watching feels inspired to go pick up your paintbrush, your lump of clay, <laughs> whatever you use to create with, and start making stuff. It's important, 
it matters, and it is all a part of our story. Thank you so much for watching, and happy Pride, everyone!